crash course in the third place deck, the Benny Beats deck from May Constructed. Now, what I will tell you, Epic Agenda is the only non kark deck in the top four. Atlanta was using some tokens. No Verb had, had some other stuff going on. Um, but I want to bring up just the Benny Beats deck. Now, let me... Not to brag, I'll sh I can literally show my trophies at the end of this. I've been playing this exclusively all in July. I hit 14 levels. I am the number two place in monthly for July in Constructed. I'm the number five in Constructed overall right now. That is strictly due to Benny Beats. And as for Chamberlain Kark, basically almost my entire record is due to being a Kark player. Now, Kark is a boring deck. It's a deck with this, this version only, well, sorry, all, almost exclusively wins by Kark. I have actually won by damage, but that was just more like the opportunity was there, and so I thought I'd try to speed up, because there are games I will go to time. That's 50 minutes of playing Kark just to get a single win. You have to keep your eye on the clock. You really got to know when to take the hit versus try and prevent the attack. Now, so duel's been added, and we're going to just kind of go through card by card. Um, Absolve here is exactly what Kark wanted. Duel, basically, in my opinion, gave Kark everything. It, it, gave, it, gave, it gave more health gain than it gave damage. I know, because right when we threw Duel into the mix, my first thought was, man, there's way more direct damage, and I put it all together. Well, the problem was, I was winning maybe a third of the time, and I was still, I was basically getting blown out, and you'll laugh by this, by Drain Essence. The, the, the nine point gain versus the seven points of damage I could deal with, say, a Fires of Rebellion or even eight points from, from, from like a, a flame attack. The problem is math. Not, not I mean, obviously, yes, I, I, I know I can do math, but I'm talking about the fact that right here, gain four, draw two cards. Might not seem like a lot. But when your goal is just to hit 60, this is a great first turn play. Whenever you have nothing better to do, this card is like is the card you always want to see. If you could run more of almost any card, I, I would actually would say I like this more than Inner Peace. Now, mind you, Inner Peace is, is why you win. I just love this card for the way it works. Angel Light is a three count. The fact of the matter is you want your one goal to be basically be used for 10 plus points of damage prevention or, or health gain. More or less. Now, obviously, the big thing here is, from any Kark player, keeping cards in hand in a traditional Kark build, which this basically is, this is a control build, keeping cards in hand, you really want to stay above four cards. Almost, many of my losses have come to the fact that I've gotten to three cards, and I'm not playing any draw twos, they have me behind the eight ball, whatever it is. If you can get a Kark player low on cards, you do have a solid chance of pulling it out. Now, mind you, that does say, oh, well, they're... Uh, going to be good with Knight of Shadow and, you know, Thought Plucker. Uh, kind of. If a card player knows what they're doing, they'll actually let you get the discard on them and then just fire off a draw two so they won't be up as many cards, but that's kind of the way things go. Angel of Light. Uh, there we are. Lost her. Uh, obviously, you have the Ambush. You have the Gain 10 uh, effectively in this deck. It, it does what you need it to do. And if you're blocking a non-breakthrough uh, flyer, you know, your Draca, your Draca's Enforcer, um, I'm starting to see Thundarus and some other dragons show up. Well, I can prevent all that damage plus gain 10. This thing can can basically almost be a gain 20. I, I mean, obviously you're adding the damage prevention with the, you know, health gain. You, you get the idea on that. Breath of Life. This card is just basically cheating. This is your inner piece, 4, 5, and 6. Now, yes, it is a one-shot you only get to gain 12 health once versus inner peace going over and over and over again. The ability to bring a champion back, let's look at the champions you can bring back. You can bring back Kark, you can bring back Angel of Light. This actually, some odd reason, works with the zeros. I did not think it was going to. You can bring back Bodyguard, Brand, and Watchful Gargoyle. So you're mostly only using this uh, part two to bring back a Kark. Uh, if you remember our Atlanta interview, uh, he generally is like, oh, I'm not going to play Kark unless I'm gaining, you know, 14 or whatever, or in my opinion, 12 plus. However, if you can play this, gain 12, 
take a cark out of your discard, sometimes that's important. Now you might say, why is that? If a, if one, if the other player, because you're not really attacking their life total, starts getting up there, they start getting to 50 plus whatever, if they can use their drain essence or, or some sort of other way of, you know, righteousness or whatever, with all those other Kark decks, if they have a way of stealing the Kark from your discard, you might, you know, just want to handle that. That's another tactic to get to. Obviously, there's the main man himself, Kark. Divine Judgment, obviously, for board clear. Board clear. Now, I'm going to point to this, and obviously to Divine Judgment. A draw two option. You, you can't be afraid to pitch your board wipes for draw two. Keeping cards in hand is paramount. You need options. And if you're at five cards and use one of them as a wrath, now you're down to four cards, you're going to have let, you're going to be paying for three or four turns on that. If you have two board wipes in hand and you're not constantly being shown by a bunch of blitzers, start drawing two. I'm just pointing that out there. Inner Peace, obviously the best card in the deck. Lay Claim, it's a new one. Um, you'll see it's a one of. It's a board wipe most of the time. I'm using the word most of the time. Uh, or it can show up with four humans and drawing a card. So it can replace itself part of four humans. Why would you want four humans? More and more, there are... There is, sorry, yeah, I know this is, this is one of those English sentences. More and more, there is less and less breakthrough. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Uh, but that's also why Epic Agendas got a, further in, because of the Rage Count, because of Lash. Kark has the ability to stall a game. Now, if you look at why Tom won back in March, it was because he had a deadly raid on untargetables. So that meant Kark had to block them, and they had to block them cheaply. If you don't have the ability to generate tokens, you're going to get beat by some of those untargetables. Martial Law, obviously another board wipe. I have never used... Uh, no, sorry, that's, that's a lie. Let me rephrase that. The Make Five Humans parts of this. There is one or two scenarios I can think of it. The realistic one is if they do Demonic Rising to go for the win. If they're playing some, you know, whatever deck and they go Demonic Rising, this can block up to 20 points of Demonic Rising, which um, that's, that's not bad. Now, there is a part two to that. Well, why wouldn't you just clear the board? I'm like, well, that's, that's probably a better call, too. So, I've, I've never played the human part of this. I'll just put it that way. I've never played the human part of this. Board wiping is generally better. There are so few unbanishables. I'm not that worried. Uh, where were we? Martial Law Quell as a one of. Um, because you're running Wave of Transformation, because of all these token decks that show up, I mean, uh, the other, Atlanta's Kark deck was a token deck with Kark in it, oh, or vice versa, a Kark deck with, with a heavy, heavy token package. Um, the Demonic Rising deck, you have, um, is it Xanos? Uh, with all the zombie tokens, those show up. This card does definitely does some work, but as a one-of, that's about all you need. Subjugate one-of. Uh, again, it's another board wipe with a draw two. Um, it's a very situational board wipe, as you can see, more times than not, I found myself just using this as the draw two. There is a however to this. This stops your Kong. This stops your Draka. Draka's Enforcer. Um, I'm trying to think of other big ones on bed. Uh, sea Titan, Steel Golem, you know, uh, Mythic Monster from um, Epic Agenda's deck. There, currently, there seems to be, you know, there's a couple camps, you know, obviously the metagame is, is shaking up more and more and since Duel's been out uh, longer now, and I took my full month to kind of go through this. When this card is good, it's mostly because it's clearing out the big beaters, or if they use, say, Rage, because Rage also increases their defense. There might have been, say, a 6-6. A well, once Rage hits, it becomes a 10-10. This can clear that out now. Using one card to clear out one doesn't feel like great economy, but one gold should be used for about 10 points of health gain or 10 plus points of health prevention. So, when this card's good, you'll know it, but one count is about right. Urgent Messengers, three count, two humans that are just down there block, uh, you know, the blitzers that they throw down. And I'm you, Almost every time I'm like, hey, it, it's a draw two with humans, not it's humans with draw two. Obviously, you have to know what deck you're in. This is just more board stall. This is more board stall, and that that's oh, that's really it. You know, how many blitzers, you know, are coming down the ground, you know, say your Pyrus, or obviously wait till they, you know, attack and then put it down the block, but you get my idea. 
Bodyguard, obviously there's three of, it blocks all day, every day, keeps coming back. I've seen people waste amnesias to handle this guy alone because it will stop the Seed Titan. It will stop the um, uh, Steel Golem over and over and over again. And those were their heavy hitters. Those are the ones that they were like, oh, this is going to do it. I'm like, ah, Bodyguard will stop you. Uh, brand, big thing here is that it's still, you know, gain five. We talked about before. Mobilize, this is a huge, huge, huge ad. I, I understand those three huges. Zero for seven health or three humans. It can either stall with three humans or get you seven health. So you just have to weigh. Are the three humans going to stop more than seven points of health? Okay, then use that option. Otherwise, just gain seven health. There are many times I'm at, say, 50. I don't have, I only have like two you know, good cards in hand or, or, you know, and a kark. So obviously the most I can get is 54. I draw this off the top. Boom, I go up to 57. Those two cards take me up to 61. This one has pulled me into more wins than I ever thought possible. And I thought this was kind of disposable when I saw the way uh, Duel was shaping up. Second Wind is still there because it's amazing. Watchful Gargoyle. So this is over from Atlanta's change um, when he was talking about how, how important that recycle can be, but the bigger thing here is it is a zero drop airborne ambush. That means it's stopping your strafing dragon, it's stopping your draca. Those are the big two that come in out of nowhere, and that's that's what you have to stop. The drac, if I had to prioritize the cards that frustrate me the most, it's often draca, um, not strafing dragon, it, it's draca and Actually, uh, Juggernaut. There we go. I got the words out of me. Uh, because they both they both have Blitz, and they both hit for 9+, plus, which, uh, you know, you have to waste bigger cards to gain that much back. Here we are, you know, for that small evil package, Drain Essence. It's it's almost inner piece and removal, all wrapped into one, which is awesome. It, it takes out a lot of big rear targets. It gains 9. I mean, the big, for, the, for me, the big one is, they go Draca, I answer right back with Drain Essence. I can go one for one. It'll get me nine back in the, on the board. You know, and there, there are a lot of good targets. Uh, Dracus Enforcer, obviously, also on there. Getting nine points back or in a pinch is, is, is pretty good. Now, you'll see that there's a line break there. Why I'm going to bring this up, you can play this on an empty board and still gain nine. That's a, that's a very entertaining tactic people don't always see coming. Uh, since I have, t since there are two, yeah, I don't, I don't have this. I didn't build this deck. There are two essence drain essence. So what's the one zero? You might say, oh, I want something to clear out their discard pile. This deck can deal with this card mostly just by weathering the storm. Now you might be playing fifty minutes, so you know, make sure you go to the bathroom before you start your game. But this, more often than not, you're seeing a rise in token decks, and this is simply there to handle it. It also backs up your wave of transformations. Speaking of, you'll notice Ancient Chant is down to a one of. Well, why is that? Uh, I can give you a couple answers. The answer right there is Absolve. All those extra uh, Wraths you have, Subjugate added in there. You still have your Urgent Messengers. You still have plenty to play to get cards back. That, that Ancient Chant is mostly there for that frantic digging. Uh, more times than not, I toss it immediately to frantic digging, or just the number of amnesias people love to throw at you. Uh, it just gets you one card back out of it. I mean, for as a single, it's a card where you really do want it a ton, but you can't find the slots to do it. There are a lot of one ofs in this deck, and to make room and get it cut down to the bare minimum, which is sixty, that's what happened. Two lesson learned: I can just tell you from experience, three is overkill. And there are sometimes I have wanted the second or used the second to actually replay an event. Realistically, the deck wants 1.5. <laughs> and obviously, you need to take a whole card. So you're looking at, you are looking at two, just because, because of how many situational or very specific board wipes you have, that sort of stuff. And it is still a draw, too. But this will, you know, or just firing out the Drain Essence as a second time. That is absolutely one of the, one of the greatest feelings when you're like, they're like, okay, boom, Drain Essence, your Draca, you know, comes back to your turn or goes their turn, whatever. Like, oh, we're going to play another Draca. And you're like, all right, I'll just lesson learn and play it again. Resets here is a three of. Uh, the fact is it handles Unbanishable. It handles Token Swarms. That's the big, 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 big part of this. 
you're in the rise of token swarms, reset is a hard clear because insurgency puts out unbreakable. So you'll notice that from Atlanta's um, March build, there aren't zombie apocalypses. There aren't break all champions. There are banish, and then there then there are the sage reset and wave of transformation. There is nothing that's transform proof. There is nothing that is bounce proof. So these are your answers, and I'm, you know, just from my games I've been playing the whole time, I have seen, you know, armies that can't be banished. Now, mind you, it's, I'm talking mostly Thundaris. That's the one I see the most. But if you need to have extra answers, these work. We have a transformation as a two count. That's fine, because you don't really want to replace their, you don't really want to downgrade their threats. Um, the difference between this and Martial Law is because Martial Law is a good card, which means it's worth two health points when you play your Kark. So... Arcane Research. Now, Brandon talked about this one, how he said how impressed he is with this card. You'll notice here it's a one-off, but the number of times you'll get to mid-game and you're just sitting there at 50 with this full grip and your discard's full of cards, you've been trading back and forth, everything else. When you cast this and you banish like five to ten cards, I think my max is 12 My you know from my games. I, I've actually hit 12. And you are able to dig that much off the top to find that kark that you needed. Because there are many hands I've kept without a kark. And you, you just don't have a chance. You're not going to throw away a bunch of good cards to hoping to dig a kark out of there and get a bunch of bad cards with it. Um, so that's the deck. Now, uh, I, I'm going to try and wrap this up. The reason this deck really speaks to me is that this is like a very old style of Magic the Gathering, that uh, style deck. Its win con is singular. It's Chamberlain Kark. Can you win by Angel of Light Beatdown? I actually was winning the one time by beating down literally with two Chamberlain Karks in play, so I'm swinging in for 18. I have the third in my hand. I just wasn't able to get the life gain out of it. But, the, I mean, he is a 9-12. If you can play him and gain 10 plus, because again, you want your one goal to be worth 10 plus. If you can play him and you have a second one in hand, absolutely. But you do have to just be aware of those situations where, you know, you don't want to end up with it in your discard pile. That's why um, if you get a Chamberlain Kark, you have to know the kind of player you're playing against their deck. You don't want them to steal it with, say, Final Task or, or something of the like. Those are fewer and fewer because it's, that's mostly in the Xanos builds because they're one of the other ones that can actually gain all that. But you will see other ones that... Anyway, I'll, I'll cut that outside. Kark in the discard is the worst for you. You want it in your deck. You want it in your hand. You don't want it in the discard. So generally, you only play Kark when you absolutely... You know, if you're going to gain, you know, 10 plus, 12, 14, whatever, or you're going to win. This deck is, is, it has a single card win con. Everything else it does undoes what your opponent's trying to do, which is drop your health total to zero. It faces down these mid-range decks that don't have breakthrough. They're like, oh, I have Blitzers. I have Airborne. You know, I have Unblockables, that sort of stuff. And this one will just laugh at it. They'll take a hit. For, you know, I've been in 40 or 50, and I'll just laugh. I'm like, oh, I'm going to attack for 25. I'm like, I can take it. And bounce back. Go ahead. You attack in. I take the hit. Goes my turn. I board wipe. And then I just take another 20 minutes and I'll build myself back up. This, this version is the version I like. I am not saying it is the best version. I'm saying from all my plays that this is the version I like. Now, I, I just... Literally, I'm just showing you this to emphasize. Right there, Night Hydra, second place for July... Lifetime Constructed, this took me from basically the number 10 or 9 spot, I was at 9th or 10th, all the way up to 5th, which you can see, those are much higher levels. It really came from playing Kark. So, like it or hate it, because of Duel, Kark really is the deck that's very hard to beat right now because it can gain 10 plus points a turn. 10 on mine, 10 on yours, that's 20 total. Well, you can only, generally, you can only deal massive damage on your turn. Let's say you deal 12, and then you come to mine. If you can't deal the other 8 that are needed, then I'm going to gain that difference. I'm going to gain that 8. I can sit there juggling those inner piece back and forth. 
I, I, I simply just want to emphasize that right now, Kark is positioned so well. Now, I'm bringing this up, and you'll see I have three cards added. I am not advocating that. I am telling you simply, this is shoring up my real-time matches, because I play real-time exclusively. This is showing up the current sub-meta I am playing in of the real-time players. I do not play, you know, you know ad, ad hoc, back-and-forth, asynchronous play, so don't take that, but I will just show you what I'd added. I wanted to add one hasty retreat, because I love the singleton hasty retreat from Atlanta's, so I added that. Well, I have to add two more cards. I bumped Wave of Transformation up one, and then I added a single erase. I, I've, I've missed it a bunch. I'm glad to see it back. Those three cards can easily be chipped out. Why are those three added? I've been playing some of the same players. I think on, on average I'm playing probably like some of the same 10 over and over and over again. And this shores up one of my matches, which is seeing a Thundaris. Because a Thundaris resolves, I have a lot more trouble beating it. Those are two direct answers to a Thundaris. And a Hasty Retreat is always good just to see. So I'll cut the line there. The... The the Kark archetype, I honestly don't like that it's winning this much. I, I you know that I know that sounds very, but I like to stay relevant. And in my opinion, I've been playing Kark now for almost three months, almost exclusively, except for right after Duel coming out. And I just I just have seen that health gain seems to be beating health loss on the same principles everyone hates Kark. The tools they gave it in Duel beat out the tools they gave to beat it. So, in my opinion, given what we were given, given the state of everything that's going on right now, I feel that a trained Kark player can disassemble more than 80% of the stuff thrown at it on a pro level and on you know a, a, a less experienced level, it's almost 100%. I've had to play so few mirror matches because people don't want to play Kark because it can take 50 minutes. I have the ability to play it for 50 minutes. Obviously, I have the ability to talk forever about the deck. I think it's good. I honestly can't wait for the deck to die. Until the deck dies, because the format changes, I'm just going to play Kark. So, this is Night Hydra, giving you the rundown on a deck that is both hated and beloved by the same person.